This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Upgrade your business with Shopify, home of the number one checkout on the planet. Shop Pay boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning fewer carts going abandoned and more sales going cha-ching. So if you're into growing your business, get a commerce platform that's ready to sell wherever your customers are. Visit shopify.com to upgrade your selling today. When it comes to towing, seeing is believing. That's why Chevy Truck's advanced camera technology offers up to eight available cameras for 14 unique views. So you can focus on the view that really matters. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Learn more about Chevy Trucks at Chevy.com. Safety or driver assistance features are no substitute for the driver's responsibility to operate the vehicle in a safe manner. Read the vehicle owner's manual for important feature limitations and information. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. That's what you'll feel with Bolin Branch's best-selling signature sheets in 100% organic cotton. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bolin Branch sheets get softer with every wash. Start getting your best night's sleep in sheets that get softer and softer for years to come. Try their sheets with a 30-night guarantee, plus for a limited time, get 20% off your first order at bolinbranch.com code SPAN. Exclusions apply. See site for details. What are you going to do? Well, be careful we're on recording. I'm going to piss like a horse <laughs> is what I'm going to do. Family show. We are down <laughs> on the south coast, dear listener. For what a nice little grand this is, isn't it? Lovely, isn't it? And the weather's beautiful. I'll tell you what. What a day for football. I'll tell you what, the ball boy gets his steps in though, doesn't he? Cool, that's, hey, that's a low wall. But we are here <laughs> for Eastbourne Town versus Irith Town, walking across a cricket green. Um, with Monster, the song. Is it Monster playing in the background? I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's a dodgy music video. Anyway, yeah, but what a nice little part of uh, Eastbourne this is for those who know. I'm Michael Avery alongside Rob Grant. Me at 37 years old brings the average age of this area down to about 83. <laughs> Notorious. Do you know what? Makes you laugh. Just sorry. Notoriously old people down here. Sponsored by Posturite, who are known for making orthopedic chairs if you've got a bad back. But yeah, so we're here for, um, we're at the Saffrons, which is the home of Eastbourne Town FC. For today's game between Eastbourne Town and Irith Town, two promoted sides from last season. On your award nominated uh, FCA Best Podcast Finalist. In league. Finalist. 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 I'll tell you what I'm going to do, dear listener. I'm going to keep the mic on while we go through so you can hear what it's like when you're on the committee. Ain't that right, Rob? This is exciting stuff. No support or entry to the ground until hour and a half before kickoff. Oh, I like it here. This is very cosy, as they say. The bells ring. We like this a lot. Hopefully, we're in the right place. Because it seems quite nice. It makes you think, doesn't it? Uh, you know, you, you think of like tier four and if me and all that. Wait a minute, here we go. We will uh, go back to recording after this. We're, we're, we're now in the ground. Um, we just mentioned Butler's Chaps and Brian just appears from nowhere. I didn't appear from nowhere and I certainly wasn't in Butler's Chaps, but I'm here, everyone. So good afternoon to everyone that is tuning get, in. Get a suntan the... on those cheeks, Brian. <laughs> well, that's always a... Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. And if you want <laughs> Brian's signature... Or a picture with Brian, you know. In Just the come chat. over and find him. He's on the halfway line. He's in a bright red T-shirt. Even over the time you hear this, it will not be today. He might still be. I'll be where he was. Nice brand, though, isn't it? It's all right. Yeah. It's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. What do you think of it, Wayne? Yes, yeah, right. Can I put the other up, please? All right, man, 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 a few words there. Anyway, um, yeah, we're trying to set up a camera. Sorry, we're talking to phones a lot. Apologies. But yeah, I was just saying, it's nice down here. I like it. Nice it's bomb. Nice I'll bring the average age down to about 65, I think. Is that the players or supporters or what What, age, what demographic are we uh, are we segmenting, as we say in PR? Well, as the EDI, Quality, Diversity, Inclusivity Officer, we should respect old people. Include them. In- include them. I think they are equal. That is the I in EDI. Them, then we have diversity. That's yeah. how it all joins up, you see. Absolutely. 
absolutely. Where's the chip van? We, <laughs> we need to do our usual uh, chip review. So I'm they do have chips, have chips over in the far yeah. corner. I'll tell you what, look at that dip in the pitch. Oh, I hadn't noticed that. See, look at that. I was so taken by the smoothness of it, the snooker table likeness of it compared to other pitches I could mention. I hadn't noticed that. that it's quite noticeable dip. now, isn't it? Have you seen that, Robert? Oh, that was quick. That's a lot quicker than we normally do it. Wayne, you got that in really quickly and smoothly. It's impressive, isn't it? It's always impressive when Wayne gets, gets it in quickly and smoothly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brian, you've now joined the smuts. I think, you know, if you can't beat them... <laughs> yeah, well, join them. Join them. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up. Don't give up. No, anyway. Certainly don't, especially since we've been nominated, or we're now. Where are yeah. we now in the in the in the international podcast states? No, we're going that far. We're non-league we're, post- podcast. Brand. Well, we're climbing up the divisions a bit like our own. Well, absolutely, absolutely. And when I used to talk into the phone, I remember one of the first times we spoke was at a pre-season friendly against two in and Mitchum. You was with a young man. I was with uh, a friend of mine who is a, a chair of a football club. Uh, not, it's not, not that young, but younger than good, me. But that's good, not good, difficult. Well, good most most, most then, men are younger than me yeah. these days. Absolutely. So you did, and you asked, you asked us a few questions, very tentative, this is before you uh, developed the confidence to probe me um, as you do now. Put More smuts. The, been, you've been probed, Brian. Yeah, it's just something you do every time. You, kind you, of, you pin me down, so to speak. Well, Whereas on well, that occasion, you were very... Very yeah. delicate in your dealings, yeah. standoffish, careful, stand-offish. checking me out, weren't you? Well, 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 there we are. Exactly. There we are. Oh, Sam, what do you think of the uh, dip there, just where it says online ticket? Yeah, it's no, it's a, there is a bit of a, a, a rollercoaster. Is, is, is it as bad as the Dan Hill um, at Snodland and Punjab? No, no. It's a different sort of uh, issue because uh, at least it does come And there's a little bit of a, the there's a little bit here as well, yeah, isn't there? There's a little bit like that, but you know, yeah. it'll be interesting. I tell you, what, yeah, it will be certainly an interesting one. It would be like if you were playing those games, you know, on the computers when you're like putting, you know, like Wii Sports, and you press a button and all the green goes different colours because of all the rolling. I was saying, Ian, you're 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 a man of experience. Um, you're like Jim's younger brother. True, I am younger than him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Have you? Have, I'm old. He is prehistoric. Let's be, well, let's be clear about that. Well, you know. You know, I mean, uh, what would he bring the average age of Eastbourne down to? <laughs> <laughs> Late seventies. Late seventies. <laughs> but I was saying about the the dips in the pitch. Yeah. It's uh, quite the pitch. Nice, first class looks excellent. It does. It, no, I, mean, I was saying uh, it's it's not. Uh, it's a nice ground, nice pitch. It's only when you um, really fine tune um, it, undulating. Undulating. But yeah. what they've got as a bonus here is they score on the hour and you'll hear the bells ring. Absolutely. And on the quarter past and the bells ring and on the half past and the bells ring. Yeah. Four times an hour we're going to have the bells ringing. Absolutely. Let the bells ring out for an era town yeah. result this afternoon. Speaking of bells ringing, I'm with the club's own Quasimodo, aren't we, Brian? <laughs> I am. <laughs> cruel. Who is the, club? Who is the club's Quasimodo? <laughs> I'll let you choose that. If you can think of anyone ugly enough to be a hunchback, dear listener, as always, email info at Eric Town. Any or any other. Yeah, but and it's a good thing with the quality, diversity, inclusivity officer because we, if, if we wasn't with him, we would be making all sorts of jokes about people with dodgy backs. Up the dockers. He is very schoolish. We're about three, four minutes in. Again, not a lot's happened. Um, the Eastbourne uh, town... Fans, every time uh, Irith do a little bit of a screw with pass or shot or something like that, they give a woo one of them jobs. Yeah, well, they don't get out much, do they? Yeah. Oh, our chips are ready. Oh, lovely. We'll get the chips. Um, yeah, so only about four or five minutes in. Uh, I would say a sort of lively start, but not a lot going on. It's, it's, it's a good path, path. Fast pace. Put your teeth in, Michael. It's a lovely day today down here on the South Coast. You know, we've got layers on, but we don't really need them. Um, and the way the corner flags are going... There doesn't seem to be too much uh, wind factor at the moment, which sometimes you get in these coastal towns, i.e. somewhere like Dill. But, as we were saying earlier on, you know, Erif Town will be wanting to bounce back from last week's disappointment against Beckenham Town. Um, and, you know, this is a good chance to do it. To, in, with all due respect to Eastbourne, they're a bit further down the league than Erif are. And, you know, they're a recently promoted club as well. So pedigree-wise, unless they've had a major splurge in spend in Eastbourne or they've had, like, the next Lionel Messi come through the system, it should be quite uh, similar. But James Dyer now playing on the right-hand side today. Um, normally he plays on the left, you know, but now he's on the right. Um, long ball over the top by Jacqueline Taylor, but the bullets, it goes back to their goalkeeper. 
are. Talking to um, a couple of people today, they say that, you know, a couple of players are confident and there should be some goals. So hopefully, hopefully we might uh, we might get some. But at the moment, it remains nil-nil. Are we staying here or we? We can stay here, but I have to say, though, the, the, uh, the chips were, I think, a generous five. Yeah, they were undercooked and uh, not very palatable. Small portion. Yeah, I've had better chips. I have, it's a I shame, have. really, because everything else so far has been really nice. The ground's nice. The grass is good, despite the fact the pitch is a bit wavy. Um, <clears throat> well, maybe they need to have the chips softer so they're mushier for the false teeth. Yeah, maybe. Absolutely. But no, we were just commenting a moment ago there. Uh, Irith Town just had a really great little movement there on the left-hand side, which saw the ball come to Ollie Milton, but he just, for some reason, he just didn't want to pull the trigger, did he? No. Uh, I think um, I don't think he trusted himself to be able to get past the defender, so he tried to cut it inside, and all he ended up doing was running into a brick wall. So mm. a bit of a shame because it was a terrific move, a couple of really nice little one twos down the left hand side that really worked. Yeah, we just mentioned a moment ago as well. You know, um, Dyer was just over on the right wing where it seems to be going now. Uh, a position he's not overly comfortable with or familiar with, should I say? No, it's not somewhere we normally we normally put him, but you know. Uh, I suppose there's method oh, in Lovely there, turn there by Hayden Bullis who got the ball there. Ball up the line. Oh, do you know what? For how good that turn was, it's just gone nowhere. But, um, yeah, a position he's not normally used to, uh, Dyer. But, um, yeah, I think, you know what, we're 12, 13 minutes in. Very, very little has happened either way, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, it's it, we've settled into the game quite nicely. Yeah, seems that one. Um, yeah. There's nothing... And like you say, there's really not much going on. There's a lot of passing and movement in the middle of the pitch and very little going on in either area at the moment. <coughs> but uh, I guess both sides are just feeling their way into the game. So, Well, I was going to say it was quite interesting because I was um, read this thing on BBC News the other day um, and it was basically saying how <coughs> Guardiola um, predicted what was going to happen in the West Ham game the day before, literally minute by minute as if you'd already told him what had happened and everything went the way he said it would go, like they'll attack at this time, they'll do this. And, I mean, you can argue that um, we've got Pep Woodward. Uh, yeah, possibly, uh, but without the 115 charges uh, <laughs> hanging over him. Um, he normally gets one or two. Yeah, uh, yeah, one or two, but not 115. At least, not at this, not at this point of the season. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, now, Irith Town got the ball on the left-hand side. AJ Dive just bombs up the left wing, gets a cross in towards Harry Taylor on the far post, and the defender just cuts out. Great run there by AJ Dive. In truth, there was nothing in front of him, but fullbacks don't normally like running that strongly with the ball. No, not really, but um, he's a different class as AJ. Mm. Um, he's very good getting down. He does get forward really well. Generally, in general, puts a really good ball in. Yeah, absolutely. And um, lucky, uh, lucky there from uh, Jack Holland, really, that Tom Ash was there to cover him there. Lovely ball over the top by Tom Ash towards Harry Taylor, challenges the goalkeeper. But it's a ball that rightly you should go for. You yeah, know, it's 50 50. They're shouting and screaming, yeah, but they both went for the ball there, didn't they? No, there's no malice in that at all. Shake his hand. Well done, Harry. Good lad. And we're getting funny looks by some of the fans over there who don't think that was a foul, but, you know. Players, well, you, you, we're all fans today, lads, ain't we? It remains nil-nil. A chance a few moments ago there from the right-hand side by Eastbourne... Um, I think called Eastbourne Borough. Wrong team. No, wrong team. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Eastbourne Town. Crossing from the right-hand side, met in the air, but held well by Nathan Edwards. Yeah, uh, from what I can see from this far away, in the opposite corner. Um, but no, it was... Uh, they, yeah, they looked like they got through, but yeah, it, was, it seemed like it was easy takings in the end. Um, I, I think... Because they're 12 and um, they're not doing badly but they're probably not doing as well as they'd like and they seem to be snatching the things a little bit because they've had a couple of times when they've got in and then like hoofed it over the bar and, like, but not just not just a little bit over the bar but 10 feet over the bar we're talk, talking to a couple of representatives from Eastbourne today um, I have uh, you, you're led to believe they'll be happy with a draw and very similar to Earth Town where let's be honest on paper you're just trying to consolidate the season yeah exactly so um which is, you know, you can understand it, but from our perspective, uh, I'd rather see three points on the board and, uh, and consolidate fourth yeah, uh, for yeah, another week. Because um, the longer that goes on, the better, as far as I'm Well, like, like we said a little while ago, wouldn't it? All the time you're near the top of the table winning, I mean, I don't want to be the kiss of death here, but all the time you're near the top of the table winning and you just keep doing it, you're not thinking about winning leagues, you're just thinking about just maintaining it. And it's a bit like with... Um, you know, it's a bit like, you know, everyone talks about it a few years ago, but like with Leicester City when they won the Premier League. You know, every time you sat down with Ranieri, it was like, how many points we got? 28, we need 12 more. 
they weren't yeah. thinking about winning the league. No. You know, even though they were top of the league and in the top four <coughs> and all that kind of stuff, and you know, even when they'd qualified for the Europa League, um, it was like, oh, you're thinking about the Champions League? No, no. We're the target was to stay up, you know, yeah. and a bit similar to now at the moment. You know, again, I'm not going to get some sense of grandeur that Irvine will win the league and do this. This it probably won't happen by Christmas. You know, we'll be it by injuries. You know, L- Lady Luck always gets you, but we can't really do a lot wrong than what we're doing at the moment. And it's just been a great start. Yeah, it has. It's been a much better start than I ever anticipated, to be honest. I think, I think you know, and, and I'd have torn your arm off for full foot at the beginning of the season before a ball was kicked. So to be where we are. As far as I'm concerned, it, it, it's like everything about it augurs well for the rest of the season. Mm. And if, if we just maintain our win-loss uh, draw ratio for the rest of the season, I'll be happy as Larry, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, and mathematically will be safe. I think, you know, speaking to Dean and Woody, they're aiming for the 40 points. You know, we're, we're on about, what, 14, 15 points or something like that already. So, you know... And you, you can understand their reasons for yeah, saying absolutely. that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Because cause, cause obviously that is... The aim is to... You know, you can't consolidate unless you can stay up and so on. So you can understand their reasons for saying that. But for me, I think, you know, I think we're better than just 40 points. Look, from what I've seen so far in this league, I think it takes a Herculean effort to get into it. But once you're into it, I think it's actually not as hard as you think to stay in it as long as you're yeah. organised... Well structured, you know, and you've got you've got the right attitude and so on and so forth. There's a lot of teams in this league that I think that we can best, uh, and I think we can we can I think we can make stand the Stanmore really count this season. Mm. And um, if we do that, I think you know we'll be comfortable mid table and. Uh, and then looking to see what we'll do the following the season after that and the season after that. One thing I will say as well is that I think that the teams who have beat here if so far, or like with Ashford who got the draw, um, yes, actually they do a great at the moment when they get a draw. To, to, to have to play like an area of town and get something you have to put in a shift you know like Beckham oh, yeah they yeah. Get, like you know you can argue they came from 2-1 down and it was a bit of a slip but you know they've had to come from 2-1 down to base Sheppey you know the, the result says 3-1 and if you watch the in my opinion one-sided highlights from Sheppey um, it made it seem like it was all them but you know when you talk to people there it was a case of that Sheppey just couldn't or we couldn't take yeah, our chances it's the same with Beckham you know, we, you know we, we went nose to nose with them for the entire game and they nicked it literally with like four minutes to go yeah. so um, you know, it's not like they were like so far ahead of us or anything. They literally squeaked it, mm. and you know, you, we can argue that that was a mistake on our part, etc. Et Same with the Ashford game, you know. <clears throat> yeah, you know, we we, we was uh, comfortably two 0 up for a long period. Yeah, and and so as I say, well, we were three 0 up for a period, but yeah. um, but you can argue that you you can argue the toss on on any of those games about you know that well we made a couple of mistakes and that and the other, but the point we're trying to make is the football was not that much better than us it was yeah. just you know but again I'm not saying because the standard of the league's poor I'm saying that we've raised our game yeah, yeah. So, so it's like if you watched us in pre-season you know Holmesdale Irith and Belvedere um, all these other teams that we played in pre-season as well we were just a completely different level in yeah. my opinion no absolutely mm. but we'll, we'll, again we'll continue with this how it goes there was just a chance a moment ago where uh, there was another well held save from a cross from the left hand side from Nathan Edwards but so far so good 25 minutes in 0-0 nil, nil. lovely ball on the left hand side they are unlucky just lovely lovely ball on the left hand side just from uh, slightly behind Harry yeah from James Dyer there that no, was from AJ. No, James Dyer played the ball over the top oh. to AJ. AJ crossed it in and then it got cleared. That's what I'm saying. If you let me finish the build up, yeah, the the action. <laughs> Goodness sake. So, as usual, you'll be on the play. Yeah, That's thanks. What you're Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I was talking to one of the diets the other day and they said that, um, that James and AJ have got quite the bromance. Mm. Well, there you go. Well, I don't know if they have. I just made that up. I want to start some like, in, in house oh, gossip. Just- so I'm trying to start a room. Absolutely. Cor- cornerbacks come in from the left hand side now from Hayden Bullis. Arms are up. Whipped in towards the far Great post. Corner. The keeper holds it well. There's no change yet. Good. Do you know what? You say it's a good corner and you could argue it was too close to the keeper, but if, if you're hitting one on the basically, you know, about three yards after goal, you expect <coughs> someone to challenge that. I would have expected Harry to be running in on that and like jumping with the keeper. Yeah. He, you know, he, even if he'd won the header, he might have been pulled up for a foul, but at the same time, like you've got to be going in on those. Yeah, it was begging to be headed. Absolutely, absolutely. And now they go down the other end. Eastbourne with a long cross towards the far post, and he gets dealt with quite well. I have to they've, say, they've done a couple of them, and it's like nobody's actually. They've never bothered to actually figure out how wide their pitch is. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. And I've got to say as well, it's um, one thing I'm quite happy with, and I've noticed is the talking just a minute ago there, like um, 
you know, AJ dives screen for the ball from Dyer. And I know that when, when you, like everyone says about talking to basic in football, and it is a basic in football, but ultimately you need to be able to do it. And I think like here of town, you just heard like a call for step up. You just heard to over time. You're hearing loads of talking to each other. And I think that's one thing we do do really well. Yeah, we do. But the communication on the pitch has always been good. And uh, yeah, well, I think we're making more of it this season. You, you can tell from the, the shouts that are coming out from the dugout as well. Uh, they're all talking, they're all, especially at the back. Yeah. Really, really, you know, communication's yeah. been good. Um, also, I want to take this opportunity to wish our friend Louis Clark good luck. Um, he's dual registered with, uh, with Rustle. Played the last 20, 25 minutes, 64 of us on their 3-0 win against Snodland. So, um, good luck, Lou. Um, a big fan, we are on the pod. Top lad, um, really nice guy. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time before he starts scoring again, really. He's, he's that good. Yeah, he just is, you know, it's like everything. He just needs matches, he needs minutes, and he needs to get fitness into his legs and uh, and then a couple of goals to get his confidence back up. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, we can't we, we can't wait around for him to do it uh, in, here at this level. Not that he can't, he just it's needs to get It's not that he can't, he just needs to... No one's saying he can't, I'm just saying, like, you know... We, you know, we 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 want we need momentum and we can't wait for him to catch up. So it's nice for him that he gets to get get those minutes. Familiar stomping ground as well. Yeah, so we'll play, we'll place in those well. He'll uh, he'll be able to get his, get the minutes up, uh, get a few goals under his belt, get his confidence back up, and then you know hopefully later on, maybe later on this season or uh, or next season, we'll see him up firing for the Douglas. Absolutely, top lad, Lou. All the best, mate. You'll be absolutely fine, and I'll see you shortly. Remember, we sponsor your track suit. Yeah. Kiss of Death that is Irith Town's uh, yeah. um, Irith Town's sponsorship at the moment. Oh, can you hear the bell going off there? Half oh, past three. So, uh, yeah. And um, Robert actually checks his watch. <laughs> what a wally. It remains nil nil. No, it's 3.30, look. Yeah. Nil nil. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Upgrade your business with Shopify, home of the number one checkout on the planet. Shop pay boosts conversions up to 50% meaning fewer carts going abandoned and more sales going cha-ching. So if you're into growing your business, get a commerce platform that's ready to sell wherever your customers are. Visit shopify.com to upgrade your selling today. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. That's what you'll feel with Bull & Branch's best-selling signature sheets in 100% organic cotton. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bull & Branch sheets get softer with every wash. Start getting your best night's sleep in sheets that get softer and softer for years to come. Try their sheets with a 30-night guarantee, plus for a limited time, get 20% off your first order at bullandbranch.com code SPAN. Exclusions apply. See site for details. A mistake from the goalkeeper there. Um, very uncat-like. Very uncat-like again. You, um, he seemed to drop the ball. Well, he tried to he tried to kick it out. Uh, tried to, to kick it low along the floor, and um, to, to Tom Ash, and all he did was kick it straight into the uh, the forward who was standing there watching him. Yeah. <coughs> really, really dumb mistake to make. You know, sorry Nathan, but you know it was. Yeah, and, and again, in the you got to own them. You have, you have, and in the nicest way, like we were just saying there, you know, you don't want to be too negative, you don't want to be too damn beat and anything like that. But, you know, off mic, and I will say it because, you know, we'll be critical when we need to be. We were just literally saying there doesn't seem to be much urgency to Eris attacks at the moment. We, you know, is is the tactic to weather a bit of a storm, but even then, there's, there's not much of a storm. There hasn't been much of a storm at all. I mean, I know we're down by the coast, but it just hasn't happened. No. And at the moment, I'm looking at it thinking, you know, the way it is now, we have got to... It's an absolute gift. Yeah, it is a gift, and we've now got to come out and we've got to attack, which we're going to leave ourselves stretched at the back if we're not careful. So, so yeah, we've, got, we've really got to do something to, to counter that. The thing is, ultimately, um, he knows his mistake, Nathan. Look, you can see him on the other side of the field. He's absolutely he kicking himself. He really dejected. He, he does, and, you know, he, he, he had a good game the other day against Beckenham, you know, putting off some good saves and all that. So let's just hope he picks himself up and, um, and we can recover. But... Pff, it's, it's not good when you're gifting teams goals, that's all I'm saying. 1 0 to the home side. Do you know what? Even with the goal, yeah, mm-hmm. which was a gift, was. and we keep saying it, there's not been many chances from either side, what we're saying, and I don't want to be negative, but. Yeah, you do, you love No, no, but what I'm saying is, is that like, if you can count the half chances, they're all going to Eastbourne. They are at the moment. Um, we just we've just not seem, done anything. Have we? we can't seem to hold on to the ball. We can't seem to string more than two passes together, which is really worrying. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's just I don't know, something lackluster. I, maybe it's the I don't know. Long journey in a coach. They haven't shaken out their legs yet. I don't know what it is. But at the moment, 
every time they get the ball, two passes, and then they either give it away or, or it goes out. Yeah, I'm so, not playing up to any novelty or any sort of like superlative or anything dramatic, but what are we 39, 40 minutes into the game? Have we had a shot and goal yet? No. Not one. I know. And so, again, I think you can say, like, again, the mood changes when there's a goal. Up until they scored, they were very similar. A few half chances, Nathan picked a couple up, or there was a low cross that he gathered. But again, very, very routine stuff from both teams. But yeah, I no, mean, nothing with any venom in it. No, nothing exactly. he had to struggle with. Yeah, long throw there by AJ Dive towards Harry Taylor. Harry Taylor is just, just too long for him. And um, the goalkeeper gathers there. But, I mean, like I say, it's, it, it, there's, there needs to be a bit more urgency now. But... Yeah, the, the, the slow 20 minute half hour start has now extended to nearly half time. Yep, and uh, it doesn't look like at any time it's going to get better anytime soon. So Good touch there by Dyer. Oh, unlucky, James. It's looking like, um, <clears throat> it's looking like a rocket out is going to be uh, administered at half time. Yeah. Something needs to happen because at the moment they're just, they're just not at a races. No, no, absolutely. And, and again, I know you, if you listen to this from earlier on, you might think, oh, I tell you what, they've, they've jumped on a bit of a bandwagon, but you sort of have to when you're letting a goal like that. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. It remains 1 0 to the home side, and you know what? It's bit me thinking, let's get this half out of the way, regroup, let Woody have his word with them and grads and go from there. 1 0. We'll record now because there's only going to be a couple of minutes left, including stoppage time. But yeah, they, they definitely did a rocket put up them somewhat. They do. Uh, they need to have something. They need to have something injected into them, quite frankly, because at the moment it's just all bit all over the place. It's been a couple of nice forays down the hour, le- down the left hand yeah, side. Yeah, between AJ and Dyer. Between AJ and Dyer, AJ has put a couple of good crosses in, but slightly behind Harry, slightly in front of Harry. You know, and when Harry has got on one, he's it's it's been a difficult one. It's ended up going going over. The defender um, defenders are dealing with him well in truth. Yeah, they are. Their, their defence re- is really seems to know what they're doing. Between their six and their, their big centre half, they, they really seem to Hayden Buller says the ball now in the centre midfield. He looks for the ball that under hit the ball there to um, Ollie Milton, who's recovered it well to make it a 1 2. Hayden Bullis now has a step over to try and beat him, plays it back to Jack Holland. Jack Holland now on the ball, gets the cross with his left foot, but just as far as the centre half. So much, but this is like the end product's letting us down today, I think. And again, another under hit pass. That's the second one in succession. You know, you, you've got to play the ball in front of them. You can't just play like a little hit and hope or a little tap, can you? Yeah, little taps are just not going to work. And, and you know, we're just not, we're, we're, we're nowhere near it at the moment. It's, it's so weird because normally we're like dead on it. But I don't know what... It's, and in truth... And it's so- not, you can't point at one or two players and say he's not on it or he's not on it. It's, half time. it's the entire It's the entire team at the moment. So, yeah. you know, yeah, get in there, get them in there, regroup. Put a rocket on, tell them whatever it is they need to be told, but to get them to come out, absolutely put some fight into it in the second half. Without trying to be too mean and too horrible, even if there's a shot that's on target in the next half, that'll be more than what we've seen in this one. Adam Woodward and Grads will more than likely have quite a stern talking to them, but in my opinion, they're nice lads, they're good lads, but I think it's needed. 1-0 yeah. to the home side. We're back for the second half and already Eastbourne are attacking. A great yeah, block there. On. JJ's on. I don't know who he came off for. I'm for, shall I say. Um, Leo Mazzone it looks like uh, looks like we're having a four four man defence or maybe a five man defence um, Leo Mazzone makes way for Callum, Callum come JJ on. there oh, he wasn't on oh Callum McGeehan's on as well there so yeah must be a couple of changes we'll have to check what those are but anyway we're, we're back now um, which I find odd because I don't think we were too bad at the back no I don't think we were too bad at the back I don't think, I don't think we were I don't think we were bad bad anywhere in as, only in as much as like no one was playing well yeah, you know, I wouldn't have singled anyone out. That's a great, it's... but that's a lovely little bit of footwood on the left hand side from AJ Dive. Plays it to Nathan Bullis. Oh, oh, cross comes in from the left hand side there by uh, well cut out by, by the AJ Dive and cut out well by the defence. Eastbourne now got the ball on the right hand side. Has a touch. They look for that long ball over the top. So over Tom Ash's head, the striker's just beaten him. They're looking for the offside. It's not been given. Now he's got to beat Tom Ash. He tries to slide him around him. Back back pass is played. Oh, and then the uh, defence. What's he give there? Oh, thank God for that. I thought he was going to get away. Um, <laughs> that would have been very, very harsh. Very, very harsh. But yeah, um, a good stop to the build-up there from Irith Town. But yeah, it's um, obviously a couple of changes there. Um, I'll have to check what these are before we go back. But it remains 1-0. A um, bit more end-to-end, which we like. Um, let's just build on it. Free kick there came in from deep and it goes towards uh, the Eastbourne goalkeeper who drops it into the path of... Uh, 
um, Harry Taylor, sorry, after it's after a challenge from Callum McGeehan, but it's just blazed over the bar. And you know the chances are getting better, but it's still not a uh, still not ideal going at the moment. It remains uh, it remains one 0 to the home side. Here of Town in the last twenty seconds have showed probably more than they did in the first half, but by all means it, it could be a, a lot better, couldn't it? One 0 yeah, there, there, there's a correction there. A slight correction. Uh, Rob got it wrong. Um, Callum McGeehan was playing in the first half. But you could also argue maybe that's the impact he had in the nicest way. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm with Mark Petters, who's the nicest man in the southeast of England and currently in Eastbourne today. How are we, Mark? I'm very good, mate. How are you? I always have to ask you two questions. One... Um, how do you feel after the game the other day? Obviously, getting through to the third qualifying round. And secondly, what do you think of the grass? <laughs> uh, firstly, I was ecstatic. What a great, what a great result for the club. They're eh? doing you well, the boys, isn't they? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely, very proud of them. Especially the second half. Done everything we asked, and was fantastic. And the grass, what Thames Beach pitch or this grass? This grass. This grass is very good. They got a full times groundsman, so you like to think that it is nice. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few little bumps here and there in there. Yeah. Anyway, Hayden Bullis has got the ball. He's not affected by the bumps. Has a step over, staying out on the left-hand side. Tries to cut into the box. Gets a shot out the near post. And that is, without taking the mickey, Town's first registered shot on target. We uh, we build from there, Mr. Pez. What would you... Mark, what would, you know Woody well. <laughs> your, your is... Your, this is your is Tom <laughs> Hagen to his Don Corleone. What would you be whispering his ear now? Oh. I'll be whispering his ear. Bring Sid Petters on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that patch over there needs more water. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's not it's not exactly going great today, is it, Mark? No, no. It will come. Still a long time ago, mate. We're growing into the game. So we'll be alright. Don't worry, have faith. Have faith. George Michael, he said it best, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Better think twice, touch your body and all that. <laughs> this is the wrong show. <laughs> One 0 <laughs> Again, some fantastic work on the left-hand side by AJ Dive there. Twisting and turning his way into the box. Smashes it across goal, but he just glances past everyone. Falls to Jack Holland. Jack Holland has a shot, and he just narrowly goes wide of the goal. Um, uh, James Dye now trying to twist and turn his way out of trouble, but loses the ball, unfortunately. Goes as far as Callum McGee, and they're looking for a foul there, the home side, but that's not given. Taz now got the ball, tries to play, just takes a bit too long. I think this is just pretty much, Rob, I'm not going to lie, this is pretty much just sums up the hour we're playing at the moment. It's just getting stuck under our feet, taking a bit too long and a bit of indecisiveness. Yeah, it just seems like no one seems to be where they're, you know, no one's where the, no one is where the passes are going, and it's as if they're trying to play pass the ball, expecting the rest of the team to be mind readers and know where it's going, and it, it just, we're nowhere. Hmm. Um, I can't, I can't remember the last time we completed a pass. No, seriously. And, and you know, we said it half time in cheek a moment ago there with Hayden Bullis, but you know, it's our first registered shot on target and it's easily held. Yeah, it was. And to be fair, AJ did brilliantly then to get past that. He's had a really good game for me, AJ Dyfe. He's had a great game. Yeah, he's the only one who comes out of this with any credit at the moment and uh, and he's done really well. That, that cross there, it was just begging for someone to just stick a toe on the end of it. Because it had the, it had the lovely defenders. flick on there by Harry Taylor towards Ollie Milton. Ollie Milton's chasing the ball down, and the goalkeeper does well to hold it there. Yeah, but that's that's just the thing. It's it's just a bit aimless. Yeah. A lot of it. Aimless is a great word. Yeah. It remains. Uh, it remains one 0 to the home side. A slight break in play there, Robert. While the goalkeeper's down receiving treatment. Uh, was he receiving treatment or just getting? Settling scores with his boogies. Uh, oh, oh, that's outrageous. Well, one thing's for certain, he weren't injured. Uh, he just decided to take a bit of time out of the game. But, you know, you can't blame them. They won their up. They haven't, you know, they're 12th in the league. You know, they don't want, to, they don't want another loss. They've had three on, three on the bounce now, two on the bounce. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, it's all a bit much. Mm. They're taking their time over everything now. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, we are... <coughs> what if we are half an hour or so into the first, into the second, almost half an hour into the second half. So it's reached that point where there's 15 minutes to go. They're going to start taking out every minute they possibly can out of the game. And yeah. you can't blame them. Absolutely. Remains 1-0. Um, and as we say, we've got, to, we've got to put our fingers out because it's ticking closer to full time and not a lot's happening. Fantastic word there by James Dyer. You know, he, he turns up in the game, he twists and turns his way around. 
and um, nearly gets a shot away there, apart from a last ditch block for our defender. Great work by James. It was brilliant. It was a lovely little run in. It was funny, the closer he got to the goal, the more surrounded he became. So eventually he had like five, four or five players around him, and you just knew that whichever, whatever, whichever way he shot it, he wasn't going to get it past the defence. But, uh, but, you know, fantastic. Suddenly get into the game and uh, and and, and uh, start making uh, making some impact. A substitution about to be made now by of Tan. Kola Salami about to take to the field, maybe for an Ollie, Ollie Milton? I would have thought so, yeah. It's, it, it seems to be usually the way, Kola for Ollie. Although yeah. we're not going to put him on before uh, before this free kick's taken, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see where this goes in here. James Dyer wins the free kick and he's standing over. Oh, he's going to make the substitution now. We'll, uh, we'll come back to this free kick once... Uh, oh, no. He's taking the he's short taking way the off the off. field. Short way off the field. Well, Ollie. well played, Oli. <laughs> Oli Milton leaves the field. Kola Salami comes on. Pass James Dyer is about to take. <laughs> yep. James Dyer looks over the ball. The arms are going to go up to signal someone out of this, for God's sake. That's what that one arm means. See, there it is. Goes up towards goal. Anyone going to challenge that? The keeper punches clear and it goes out to, um, to Eastbourne there. It remains, uh, it remains 1 0. Chance there from the home side. A mistake from here of Tan sees them break, run into the box and get a shot away, which seems to be pushed around the post, Rob. I think it was uh, it was across that got a slight deflection, I think. But yeah, either way, uh, this corner, which you know, uh, we'll come back to in about five minutes when they finally walked over to where the corner flag is <laughs> to take it. But yeah, um, but you know, we're defenders out of position there because he's come forward, obviously. Um, but once you've lost the ball, there you've got to break your neck to get back in the box, and he didn't. So yeah. you know. We, up, we are where we are. Corner goes in there towards the uh, penalty spot. JJ wins it. Goes out as far as the box to 15 on the ball. Crosses it back in towards the far post. He then, the, the attacker no, somehow do it, coach, does something do where he manages to get the ball hit. Oh, but it drops yeah, Nathan Edwards, who kicks it high towards Kola Salami, who has, tries to have a touch. But oh. unlucky Kola, you can't beat the feeling and all that. But... Yeah, I think, I think that, that kick weren't one of the better ones we've seen from Nathan Edwards there, which is unfortunate because that was our chance to break. Half four and all is well. Half four and all is well. Well, it ain't here for us, but it is for the home side. One nil. Kola Salami, we say every single week when he comes on, he's the game changer there. He bursts down that right-hand side, gets in the penalty box, beats the tackle, plays it across goal, tapped in by Harry Taylor. Puts in it on a plate for him. Absolutely puts uh -huh. it on a plate for Harry Taylor to just swing it in the corner. He's been brilliant. And like buses, could one and two come along quite quickly here, I'm wondering. I just said it to the chairman. I said, if we get one, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, let's hope so. But Kola Salami has made an impact since he's come Absolutely on. Absolutely, yes. And they're, they're, um, they're not singing over there in uh, Eastbourne anymore. It's probably because of their age. Yeah, you know, they're all tucked up with a blanket across their knees now. <laughs> <laughs> not long to go now. Um, we were talking to a couple of the representatives from the club, um, of the home club, and they were said they were worried about Harry Taylor and they were told about Harry Taylor in the build-up. Yeah, well, you know, they should be because he's a, he's a really good set of fireworks. But, you know... Uh, they've they've done well at keeping us at bay for pretty much most of the game, and their only their only shot came from a mistake from us. So they've done nothing the entire game. No, they're not good. Well, they've not performed well, have they? No, not let's be honest. Right. I mean, you've got to be looking at this and thinking you've got to get something out of this game. <clears throat> Absolutely. I just uh, it's it's one of those. If this, do you know what we just said a minute ago off mic? If they, if it was to stay one nil or goes one all, and you're Nathan Edwards, you are kicking yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and I don't want to knock the bloke, he's a nice fella. He is, you know, but, you know, there comes a time where you've got old drowns up and say that was me and, uh, and take it on the chin. But let's not dwell on it now. We've got a bit of momentum, we've got a goal. Um, there's a bit more running in us now, so uh, let's hope we can t turn that into uh, a late winner. And so the AJ diver the ball on the left-hand side, tries to beat the full-back, gets a crossing, but it's blocked. He's still battling with that two there on the right-hand side who does enough to get the ball out. On the turn there, the centre midfielder gets around Aaron Jeffrey quite well. Aaron Jeffrey can't really make a tackle because he's already on a yellow card. Hayden Bullis with a lovely, turn. lovely turn in the centre midfield. Um, slightly under hit pass again. <laughs> slightly under hit pass again, but not long to go. Not long to go. Um, there's still time in this game. We'll, we'll, we could get something back. One all. Jack Holland on the right-hand side, plays the ball across goal low. Oh. And it's just cleared. Well played by Jack Holland. I think that's the first clearance of the game that hasn't gone over the fence. Well, yeah, there we are. Every cloud. One all. 
throw in coming in from the right hand side uh, by AJ Dive. Not much for a run up to be fair. Imagine the old Sabutio pitch, if you will. Long throw towards Harry Taylor. Harry Taylor flicks it. James Dyer's header. Oh. Agonisingly wide. Agonisingly wide. The quiff did not move, but it just goes wide of the goal. It remains one all, but not long to go now. In the dying moments there, Kola Salami's through with a mistake from the goalkeeper. One and one with the keeper, but he kicks it at the keeper when he's got the whole goal to aim at. It was narrow, but you've, you've got to find a back of the net there. It was very narrow, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that. And the fact that he made the assist as soon as he came on for the first one. But, but yeah, with all that goal yawning in front of him, you've got to say, you know, put it anywhere except straight at the keeper. And that's what he did. Eastbourne now down the other end. He's coming a little bit end to end. A cross comes across. Absolutely asleep on the far side. Yeah. There's the injury time winner. Yeah. Just as the bell chimes as well, and just as we're saying that Kola Salami should score down that end. Aaron Jeffries uh, basically telling Kola should have scored in a nice way, but a yeah, very, very disappointing way to concede. Very, very disappointing. There's, there's, for me, it was I like mean... schoolboys. Every single one of them was on this side of the pitch running around looking at the ball and they had a man just all on his own with the, well, we just, we just, with, with, with the freedom of East, of East ball. Yeah, yeah, well, we was just saying a moment ago, weren't we, like, and, and other um, well-educated people, that sometimes we, we, we're losing the ball, but we're not tracking back and getting it. And I think that's an instance there. Yeah, absolutely. It's just everyone just switched off or everyone's just ball watching. And there's a guy who comes, steals in at the far post and literally had a gaping goal in front of him because even the keeper was the wrong side. Absolutely. 2-1, not long left to go. I can't see this being a very pleasant drive back up to SE28. 2-1 to the home side. Kola Salami beats the defender. Oh, that's a big shot there. Aidan Bullis recovers there, gets the cross in towards Harry to Callum McGee and the keeper holds. In truth, I don't think that was a penalty. There's not many appeals from here of Tan from here of Tan now. No, it wasn't, but you know, you've got to shout for it, haven't you? Yeah. The keeper's down again with cramp and the ref stops play. Leave off then. 2 1. Milo with a ball now, crosses it in towards the far post. It's long. Callum McGeehan. Callum McGeehan uh, challenges there. The goalkeeper's taken out by his own player, and they've both, and they've, no, and they've both gone down. The both players have gone down now. The, um, the goalkeeper now has got another body part that's hurting. And the. Uh, <laughs> oh. Family show, don't swear. This is, look, it's game management. The physio's laughing as he's coming on, but they're 2-1 two, two up. Of course, they're going to... Harry Taylor is um, having a chat with the referee. Oh, and now he's... Oh. And it looks like Harry Taylor's going in the book for disagreeing with the referee. <laughs> not, not, not great, in truth. The ball um, it will restart with um, Town throw. The physio is about to leave the pitch on the back there. And there's going to be a substitution as well to delay a bit more time. And the 10, who's uh, walking like he's got a wooden leg, is uh, leaving the field. You're not happy, are you, Robert? No, I'm not. Uh, but to be honest, I'm just angry at us more than anything else. You know, yeah, you know, game management and all that kind of thing. And if, we, if it was us, we'd be doing it. But at the same time, you've got to sit there and kind of go, like, this is ridiculous. You know? But I'm more angry at the way we've played, the way, or the, rather the way we haven't played. Yeah, absolutely. AJ Dive with a ball now on the right-hand side. He tells the physio to move out of the way, obviously. We're into about the 95th, 96th minute. <laughs> Big throw from AJ Dive. Go, and the keeper. The keeper who just had concussion a minute ago has come out and claimed the ball well. 2-1, and I think it's going to remain like this. This will be a big goal kick now. And I think the keeper... I think the keeper's just going to uh, take his time. Big kick, ref will blow his whistle any second now. Mains 2-1. Oh. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.